This is one of my favorite pieces of gear. You might have noticed me wearing it in some of my recent videos. In fact, I'm wearing it right now. It is a fantastic wireless microphone, the DJI mic. There's a lot that I love about this thing. First off, it comes with two microphones, which is great if you're recording videos with another person. It comes with this awesome AirPod style wireless charging case. You can record locally to each microphone without even hooking them up to the receiver. I don't wanna to get too deep into the weeds, but this is a very well thought out piece of tech except for one glaring problem. So each microphone has a little clip on the back, which you can attach to your shirt. Very convenient. They also come with these super strong magnets that you can remove, put inside your shirt, and then snap on the mic anywhere you want. I tend to use the magnet method a little more often because you get more flexibility with where you can put the microphone. Long story short, very well thought out clip. Now the receiver, on the other hand, has this weird hot shoe mount. The hot shoe is the slot on the top of your camera where you would traditionally put a flash. Great place to mount a microphone receiver. But the way it attaches to the receiver itself is bananas. There's this terrible clip that slots into the receiver. For some reason it has a hinge on it. And then you slide the other end into the hot shoe mount. And the hot shoe mount has got to be one of the tightest fits I have ever experienced. I have to push so hard to get this thing in, and the whole time I'm worried I'm gonna break the hinge. And you can probably guess what happened. Yesterday, when I was mounting the receiver on my camera, the clip just snapped right at that hot shoe mount. It was just a matter of time. As I'm recording this, the receiver is balanced on top of my camera. Now, I checked online to see if you can buy a replacement piece. DJI does offer them, but they are currently out of stock. I was actually kind of happy when I heard this because I hate this clip. Ever since I used it for the first time, it was super annoying, and I know that if I get the same one, it's eventually gonna break in the exact same way. I think I can make something better. So my camera came with this little cover for the hot shoe mount, which fits perfectly. It's not too tight, not too loose, and it even clicks into place. So to start our design, I'm gonna create an exact replica of this in Fusion 360. There we go, an exact replica. Got all the nooks and crannies. For my new and improved design, I think that a two-part magnetic quick release will work way better than the original adapter. Luckily, I have these little magnets which fit perfectly on top of the hot shoe cover. So each of those magnets is eight millimeters in diameter and 2.64 millimeters thick. For a bit of clearance, I'll make it 8.1 millimeters in diameter and then three millimeters deep. So I'll pull up this face by three millimeters and then we can cut out this. All right, the magnet will go in there. I'll create a new sketch on here so we can make some interface pins. Yeah, we can probably do like 2.8. We make those a millimeter and a half, 1.5. I think that's good. Mirror those across there. Boom, four interface pins. That should be a super sturdy connection. Now for the other side, wait, let me take these off. <laughs> For the other side of the quick release, the one that's gonna to attach to the DJI mic receiver, actually we can just take this right off. Oh, it's not doing any good on here anymore. Ah, there we go. This attaches to the receiver. And I'm okay with this being a tight fit. If this is in two pieces, there's not much risk of breaking it. So like the hot shoe mount, I'm going to create an exact replica of this. I think it's time for another montage. Let's get to it. This whole video, this thing has been sliding off the camera and it is so annoying. I'm so excited to print the new version. We're getting there. So now we need to add the mirror version of this on this side. Let's rotate this up. Let's see, that's the front of the camera and this, okay, so it's in the right orientation. Align this up here and we can take it and move it into place. 
So we're gonna have another magnet on top of here. So we'll create a new sketch, project this shape, and then extrude that by three millimeters. The receiver is 17.48 millimeters thick. So what we need is above this magnet, I'll make a construction plane. That's assuming the receiver section. Now let's just make it like 17 point. Uh, we'll add a millimeter. So let's just do 18.48. So that means that the top of this part should be in line with that so that there's enough room for the receiver. Let's see, move this up so the top is touching that. Okay, so now what we can do is I'll create a box on top of here. Three millimeters is to the bottom of the magnet, so let's make four millimeters up, boom. Then we'll do a cut into this. If we turn that off, there we go, there is our negative piece. Now one thing I wanna make sure that I do, turn these construction planes off, is offset these. I wanna make sure there's a little bit of space between the positive and the negative alignment pins. That way they can easily slide into one another. So we'll press pull, bring them out by, let's say, yeah, let's just do minus 0.3, that's probably good. We're gonna combine these two pieces together. There we go. Okay, we are getting there. In fact, I think we might be there. Oh, I just realized something. Okay. So in the microphone case, you see that there's a space for each of the components. And for the receiver slot, there's a space right here for the clip that DJI makes. So I need to make sure that there's enough room in there for this piece. So essentially, what is basically, what is the thickness of this? This is four millimeters. Do we have four millimeters in here? Oh yeah, okay, we got it. It's all good. Oh, but what about the width? That is another fair question. So this is 12.35 and there are these little pieces in here. Ooh, I think it's gonna just fit. That is super close. Um, I think we might be ready to print. Before we start the print, I wanna give a big thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Bespoke Post is a free-to-join monthly membership club delivering top-shelf goods from under-the-radar brands. Each box of awesome has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small brands, many of which are based in the US. When you sign up for Bespoke Post, you'll answer a brief questionnaire about your interests and hobbies, and you only pay for what you want. Each month, you'll get a preview of what's inside your upcoming box, and you decide if you'd like to keep it, swap it for a different box on offer, or skip the month entirely for no charge. Bespoke Post is a super fun gift idea for that adventurous person in your life. There are so many fun things to try, including a box of live oysters. One of my favorite boxes I received was a beer making kit from Brooklyn Brew Shop. I've always wanted to try home brewing, and this was such a fun way to dive in. It was actually a bit more challenging than I expected, and I definitely learned the wrong way to cap a bottle. <laughs> okay. I'm super excited to try my first batch. It still is about two weeks to go, but I'll definitely post my first taste on my Instagram. Go to bespokepost.com slash morley20 for 20% off your first box of awesome. That's bespokepost.com slash morley20 for 20% off your first box. Now let's go start that print. So because this model is so small and detailed, I'm gonna be printing it on my resin printer. This is an Elegoo Mars 3. It's a relatively inexpensive 3D printer, but the level of detail that this thing is able to do is amazing. I've only used it a handful of times, but this is my first functional print on this thing. I'm super excited to try it out. Let's get to it. Amazing technology, but doesn't make the best time lapses. <laughs> so the print is now done. We can take this off and there are our pieces. Now these little tree things are supports and I'm a little worried because as you might be able to tell, it looks like this one became detached right here. So I'm hoping that that happened right at the end of the print and we didn't have a built up air all the way down. Guess we'll find out in a moment. Our print is still covered in liquid resin, so we're gonna wash that off in this washing tank. So we can take the whole build plate and put it directly into the washing tank. This is filled with isopropyl alcohol, and essentially this is just gonna spin the alcohol around, agitate it so we get a nice uniform wash. 
Now I can just take this whole thing out. I'll just put it in there for a few minutes to drip dry. So looking at this now, I do think that tree support detached pretty early in the print. You can see that this whole surface is deformed upwards. So because this is so thin and this part is going into the hot shoe, it might not actually matter, but I guess there's only one way to find out. This resin is cured by UV light and to finish curing, we're gonna put it in this UV chamber. Essentially, it's a few ultraviolet lights with a turntable. I think like two, two and a half minutes should be good. Actually, wait, hold on. I wanna take off these supports so that we don't have a shadow cast by this thing here. There we go. So I think that our support density wasn't high enough because the bottom surface on both of these curled up a bit. You can also see it on this one. But like I mentioned, it might not actually matter. So first test, interface pins fit together perfectly. We have a little bit of a separation of the surface, but with the magnet, I'm not too worried about that. Now let's try it out on the camera. Oh, it has been so annoying balancing this thing on top this whole video. I'm so excited to have a better solution. So we'll just let this hang for a second. Here is the original hot shoe cover that we based our design on. We got a nice, perfect fit, not too tight. And here is the one that we 3D printed. All right, moment of truth. Oh, you know what? I think we might need to reprint this guy. That, that swelling around the middle is just, it's not fitting. Now, let's test this guy. This part, seem to print pretty perfectly. So here is this. If I can turn it around while keeping it connected, let's see. Oh, it's a little tight. Oh yeah, I think that might be a little tight. All right, like it's fitting, but we might just need to increase the tolerance. All right, V2, let's do it. All right, moment of truth. For this V2, I increase some of the tolerances and increase the amount of support to avoid the same lifting off that we had before. And so far, it looks good. I don't see any separation between the supports and the bottom surface, but it'll be a lot easier to see once we wash it off. All right, moment of truth. Does V2 fit? see oh. dang it's still a very tight fit oh you know what I could print another one but at this point I'm thinking if I just shave this little piece off I think that might work take some of the corners off Oh, I just broke that. Well, I mean, that's closer. Uh, that's annoying. Okay, well, that one doesn't work. But let's try this one. Ooh, there we go. That is a perfect fit. And you could even hear it click into place because there's this little, there's this little spring thing right here that clicks in and out right there, and we modeled the little thing that interfaces with it. That is perfect. Yes. All right, well, one success. Ah, I think we just gotta make one more version of this guy. Really shrink down those flaps on the side. It's, just, it's too tight. One more try. So this time I printed the piece directly on the build plate with no support material. Cause even the last one, it seemed like the sides were curling up a bit. But I also increased the tolerances on the sides, added some chamfers. So I'm hoping this one works. I'm feeling optimistic, but I've said that before. Ah! All right, moment of truth on V3. Really hoping this one works. Ooh. Here we go. 
Ooh-wee! I think that might be perfect. And then let's see, to take it out, we should be able to just press the front forward. Ooh! And it slides right in. Boom. You know, it's not perfect, like the cord is forcing it up a little bit, but ooh, you know what? I have another cord. Hang on a second. If I use, wait, the audio is gonna cut out for a second. Bear with me here. There we go. If I use, ah, let me get this out of here. If I use this cord, then it doesn't push it up. There we go. That is a perfect mount. That works so well. So the DJI mic, $429. The slicing software tells us how much resin we used. Those two little pieces cost six cents in resin. And let's see, I bought a hundred of those little magnets for $20. So 20 divided by a hundred times two, four cents for those two magnets. That brings our total material cost to 10 cents to fix a $430 gadget. That is pretty sweet. And it's not even just a repair. This is a better design. Oh, and if you have a DJI mic, I'm gonna upload my design to printables.com so you can download it for free and print your own. If you would like to see what I'm up to behind the scenes, you can gain exclusive access to the behind the scenes Instagram page by supporting this channel on Patreon. I would like to give a special thank you to my top supporter on Patreon, my mom, Kathy Kurt. Thanks mom, I love you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.